How you feeling, brother? I feel good. Yeah? Yeah. Good day, good so day far. today. Yeah, it's a very stressful day, bro. Stressful? Yeah. Wow. yeah. When you're the only one doing it, bro, mm -hmm. always stressful, bro. This is the this is what they don't tell you. Tight. The stress level, bro. Yeah. When everything's depending on you. Are you grateful for your positioning? I am grateful. In many it's ways. Very grateful, you know, but very humble about it as well. Yeah. You know? So you think the stress is worth it? The stress is worth it. What you doing for the love? Welcome back to the Loft Podcast. Welcome back to the Loft Podcast. Today we have a relentless, intelligent, creative human being in the room right now. Um, yes, sir. I love that. I love that. Uh, we got the one and only Ortega. How are you, King? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Happy yeah. to be here. Thank you for inviting me into your lovely studio. Yes. I'm amazed. I'm I'm astonished at what you've done. I'm very proud of you, brother. Thank you, bro. To start it off like that, thank of you so I gotta, much. I got to throw your flowers, you know what thank I mean? Thank you. you. A lot of people don't that. hear it. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people don't hear the flowers, and that's very important, I believe, from people who are starting their own brand, their own thing, their own motion, yeah. so to say. <laughs> you yeah. know? You got to hear it sometimes, you know? And that's dope, man. I love the I love the reaction when people say, like, let's do a podcast. Let's get it going. And then they come in, they're like, oh, we're going to like do a podcast. Like, I love that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You definitely have a great, great setup here. Thank you, King. But it's not about me today. <laughs> it's about the it's about the goat. Thank you, man. What made that. you? First of all, you do a lot of things. Yeah. And not many people feel the need to do so much. What made you dive so hard? What's the hustle? Why do you want to do so much? Well, I believe it comes from how you're raised in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my parents, they're immigrants from Dominican Republic. Okay. You know, hearing the stories, going back to visit, you know, you really get a, a very quick understanding of you're not one of them, as in, you know, they won't let you fail. Mm. Um, they're always saying things like, I didn't come to this country so you can be X, Y, and Z. Exactly. Trust me, I... I know what you're talking you know, about. You know, they, 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 you know, his, Hispanic parents specifically, or, you know, any um, migratory parent, yeah. you know, they always, they're good at throwing things in your face. Yeah. They're not going to sugarcoat it. They're not going to, yeah. it's, yo, I didn't come to this country, come illegally, yeah. come X, Y, and Z, yeah. just so you can be working McDonald's your whole life. Their struggle was a lot worse than ours. Correct. That's why they were, I mean, I used to hate that. And that's why I'm also yeah. a hustler, too, because I, my pops used to be like, I used to walk barefoot to school. Oh, my God. And I'm like, I like. So, we had, well, we had a whole generation of barefoot you know, shoes that didn't exist? My fault. Shoes my were fault. gone right now. That's crazy how you, we can assimilate to that. Yes. You know, like, okay, my parents said that, your parents said that, all right, there has to be discrepancy. <laughs> Not everybody was walking barefoot. I promise you that one. But my parents are in Haiti, Dominican yeah. Republic. Yeah. Or right neighbors. There, yeah. Or neighbors. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, so continue on. What, what, what continue, like, that pushed you, that drove you to keep grinding well yeah just a, a very quick understanding of who you are in life you know like uh, uh seeing your parents struggle that, yeah. that's really it burns something in your head you know like you're like you know if i can if i can help or if i can do something you know they already did their part yeah bringing you here is the biggest thing they did yeah now it's like it's like passing the torch mm -hmm. what like you know let's say you're the fastest runner they pass the torch to you while you're not gonna run mm -hmm. that's basically what you do when you don't try to progress mm -hmm. Because, you know, I look at a last name as, you know, that's your legacy. Legacy is tough. You know, that's your legacy. That's, that's what really pushes me, my last name. I'm not going to be mediocre because mm -hmm. my name is on it. You know, once you start having those trends, you know, where, you know, you're seeing your mom come home super late. Yeah. You're seeing your dad wake up at 4 a.m., 3 a.m., crazy numbers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when we're young, we don't really take that into take take consideration account. Yeah. until you're an adult and you realize... These people are hardworking individuals, yeah. and not many people are like that. Yeah. I can soup like, we're already starting off amazingly. Because I can, I can sit and see the same passion you have, because seeing my mom, like, I love my mom to dearest. I love my dad to dearest, too. So seeing them work so hard, and me just doing everything in the world to make that day is so much more tough. Yeah. Like <laughs> getting in trouble at school, like fighting, like doing the most. And now that I'm an adult saying like, I was doing all that and they had so much on their plate. 
Like, that's, it, yeah, that's real. It's astonishing. It's astonishing. What age kicked in for you to make you start grinding? Well, I've always been a, a grinder, so to okay. say. You know, when you're young in high school, middle school, that's, what we're, that's the time period we're talking about, right? Yeah. You see it in, in the way you are, you know? Like, let's say somebody's, like, bothering you, bullying you. Yeah. You know, you get to a point where you're like, yo, it's either, you know, you get to a wall, it's like, I got to do something. Mm. You know, you, you start creating small habits mm -hmm. as a person through high school, and you start, you know, realizing who you are, you know, slowly through situations. It's yeah. situational. Yeah. Life is situational. Very. Um, you start realizing, you know, like, I have to stand for something. Yeah. Or else I won't stand for anything. Mm. So I think during high school, you know, being myself, not being accepted, mm. and still, how do I say it? Still, people wanting to be around me. But not because I was cool, but because I was everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. Everybody knew me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a more like, you know, I was a football player. Mm -hmm. I was a wrestler. Mm -hmm. um, I was very known in school. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, there's always people who try to take advantage of you, you know. Mm. And, you know, I was always somebody who was going to speak up no matter what. Yeah. You know, I'm not the biggest guy. Yeah. You know, I'm not the... I used to have... I, the biggest thing about me is I have a big heart, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm going to keep fighting until <laughs> you're going to have to kill me. Respectfully. You know what I mean? I'm, you're going to have to put me down. That's yeah. how I look at, at through life, you know? And in high school, I was developing that, you know? Like, yeah. you know, I never back down from anybody. I'd always be like, you know, you stay what I thought, you know? Even if even if it comes with criticism. Mm -hmm. You know, even if I, I would sit outside and sit by myself, I don't care. You're cool or with I'll that. Sit with, yeah, like, You're I don't You're content care. with yourself. Correct. Yeah. But it comes with, like, you know, knowing yourself. Like, I don't care what nobody thinks about me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll wear this. I used to wear Hawaiian shirts to school. Hawaiian shirts and a fanny pack. Really? To school. <laughs> you, know how, you know how ballsy you have to be <laughs> to do something balls. like that? <laughs> you gotta have some You gotta have... <laughs> and I had blonde hair. Blonde hair in blonde high school. Hair? 20, what? 2015-ish, 2016, 17. This wasn't cool. Blonde hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? On a, on a chubby every, kid. Everybody wanted to be like OBJ. You feel me? Yeah. On a chubby kid, yeah. blonde hair, Hawaiian shirt, fanny pack. You're a lame. But guess what? what? what, what? <laughs> you're a lame. You're a lame. But guess what? No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm going to the parties. You're not. Yeah. I'm having the people around me that. You're not. You're not. Yeah. You want to be with my crowd? You can't. You, you can't. <laughs> Now you want to hit me up for the Addies, the parties? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I was lame, brother. I thought, I thought I was lame. Like, you know what I mean? I thought I was lame, bro. Yeah. You know, but through all those situations, you start developing, you know, like that uh, individualism. Mm. I don't have to go with the crowd. Yeah. Um, all through high school, I didn't drink. Mm. Really? Um, yeah. Love that. Um, I didn't smoke in high school. Mm -hmm. Small micro decisions, which we'll get more. We'll talk more about that Um as we go. As we go. Mm -hmm. Micro decisions really shape who you are in life. Exactly. As you said in the, in the, as you're going on, if you don't live, if you don't stand or live for something, it's so easy to be manipulated. Yeah. A lot of people, when you're in high school or middle school or like you just got out of high school, it's so easy to be tempted by the people. And I think since I'm so ten toes on my morals, yeah. that a lot of people are like, yo, why are you like that, bro? Like, I love that you're like that. I'm like, I work to be like this. I missed out on a lot of stuff yeah. to be like this. Like, there is nothing that can break me because I watched a man, I watched a family be so strong in their morals that I'm not gonna just, I'm yeah. not gonna break it. So, I love that uh, you also had that yeah. experience as well. Like, you stand for something. Like yeah, you got to. You said your last name has a legacy tied to it. Correct. And that's beautiful. That's Correct. beautiful. So, high school happens, and then you go to the Army. Yes. What made you go to the Army? What's the initial thought? I don't think people talk about this moment. Like, really, the moment really. that, why, what made you go <clears throat> to the Army? Like, well, it, came, it comes to a point, right? Yeah. Like I was saying, micro decisions. It comes to a okay. point where you're like, okay. Yeah. You have to weigh out your decisions as a person. Mm -hmm. You're seeing people, you know, I used to play football. You know, every, every kid's football dream is to go to college, get an offer. Yeah. Right? There's something called the line of reality. You, really, you <laughs> quickly realize, okay, I'm not six foot. You're not going D1, bro. <laughs> yeah. You start really quickly realizing that. Yeah. No matter what your stats are, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. You start seeing a lot of the older guys going to college, these colleges, and then coming back and leaving the schools, you know, like. They're going to like these uh, D2s, D3s and not mm -hmm. coming back, coming back and just working yeah. and being normal. Yeah. 
Well, you know what? I'm saying all these guys because I got a, a 50% scholarship. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to pay the other half. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not a half asser. You know what I mean? I'm not about to, <laughs> you know what I mean? I see what happens to people who go there yeah. and come back and they're yeah. just, you know, it's the same potheads yeah. and just a bunch of nothing there. So I'm like, okay. I've always known, my father always told me, because he was in the military in Dominican Republic. Okay. He's always told me, if you don't get a scholarship or anything, you're going to the army. Mm. But it wasn't like, it was like small, hint, hinting it. It wasn't pressed. It wasn't, it wasn't pressed, It wasn't right? pressed enough. Okay. But it was already in your head, you know, in my head. I'm it was like, a okay. thought, yeah. In my thought. So I'm like, okay, you start brainstorming. This is what happens. A lot of people, they fear thinking what's next. They try mm-hmm. to ignore it by hanging out, going to parties, doing this, doing they that. They try to cover it, yeah. They try to cover what's really coming. Yeah. Because time doesn't wait. At all. Graduation's coming. All this is coming. Yeah. No offers are coming in. Mm. My friends are getting offers. Mm. You know, you're looking at them, okay, like, <laughs> I can't be a bozo. Yeah. What can set me apart? Am I really a dog? Because I felt like, you know, am I really that guy? Do I got that dog in do me? I, that's really what's, what really fl- do pushed me. Do I got me. that dog in me? Do I, really got my, do I really got that dog in me, bro? Like, like. Were you, were you in the mirror like, do I got that dog in me? Yeah, like, there's my coach. <laughs> look, this, this man, his name is Kyle Hayes. Yeah. Coach Kyle Hayes. He was very big when it comes to growing up. Because, you know, football coach really sets a lot of, uh, um, he teaches you a lot. That's a fact. In the in your in your age time when you're like yeah. very vulnerable, you know, your mind mm-hmm. is developing. Yeah. He used to say something called, "Everybody's a soldier when there ain't no war." Oof. What he meant by that is, everybody's gonna say they're gonna do something, but when the bullets start ringing, mm. or when you first get punched in the face, mm. that's when you're gonna know if you're really that guy yeah. or if you're not. If your in- instincts kick in, yeah. Correct. If you're really that guy or not. Uh. And I was like, you know what? I'm not really that guy. Like, yeah. I talk so much shit. Like, I'm like, because I'm, you know, I'm ballsy. You know, I'm like, I talk so much shit. I'm out here just, you know what Fanny I mean? Fanny pack. Fanny pack. <laughs> what, what? Like, what we got going on? You know what I mean? Like, I'm that type of guy. Yeah. So I immediately was like, you know what? Do I got that dog in me? I think I do, bro. Mm. Let's go test it out. Mm. That's the thing. Like I said, that's the same thing. That's the same feeling. The same feeling going into the army was the same thing I felt when I was like, do I have that dog in me? And I did wrestling. Do mm. I have that dog in me? And I did football. Okay. You know, I'm not the biggest guy, so you like I said. put yourself to the test. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's another to able, test. To be able to do that to yourself, yeah. Um, and like I said, those micro decisions have shaped who I am today. Mm-hmm. Jumping into the water when things don't look that well. Yeah. Uh, when I first went into the military, I was a little chubby. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to cut a lot of weight. Okay. I failed the test for the first time, the, the our ASVAB. Really? I failed the ASVAB, so I'm a normal guy. Yeah. I failed the ASVAB. I had to train. I had to study. I had to... You know, uh, and then I also was overweight and mm-hmm. I couldn't get in. Mm. Uh, and it's like, do you want it or not? So, okay. So now I'm re- I, I grabbed trash bags. This is how I started training. I started studying every day for the ASVAB. I get an ASVAB mm-hmm. book. It's like a hundred something dollars. I start studying yeah. every day. This is, I'm still in high school. Yeah. Uh, the season's over. Wrestling's over. Everything's over. Yeah. You're just chilling. It's like senior, se- senior year. You're waiting for graduation. You're vibing. Yeah. People are partying. People are at the lake. <clears throat> And I'm fucking, I have a, a, a trash bag and I'm running in 90 degree weather Jeez. in May. Trying to lose weight. Trying to lose weight. Yeah. March around there. Yeah. And I'm running every day. This is in Florida? This is in Florida. Oh yeah, you're this sweating, my boy. Sweating. <laughs> it's hot sweating. out here. Like, I'm going crazy. Like people are watching me with trash bags and a whole jumpsuit yeah. running, trying to get the weight off me. Yeah. And then I, two months later, I take the test again. I pass. Respectfully. I'm like, okay, step one. Now they're going to tape me for, to see if, I, if I've passed the weight requirements. Mm-hmm. Boom, I pass again. Okay. Now shit's getting real. It's getting real. Now I'm going to class. Now I'm going to class. And I'm like, bro, you guys yeah. are kids, man. Like, I already got this lined up. Yeah, like, I, you guys are kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like in two months, I'm about to go and, and actually, you know, two weeks after graduation, I'm about to be exactly. in the adult world. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I did it. I mean, I went there. Uh... And I really, that really is what really shaped my life to what it is now. Mm. Uh, I found out I really do have that dog in me. You know, when things are in their worst condition that they can be, when men are stripped down to nothing, Mm -hmm. you're in a pod with 60 other men, Mm -hmm. and uh, you're in the sun breaking down, and people don't know how to think, and emotions are there, people haven't eaten, and all that stuff. I'm still that guy that I am now that I'm showing you right now. Yeah. 
when things are very tough, you're still. I'm the guy you look you look at and you're like, let's go, let's yeah, do it. Yeah, like yeah. I'm gonna still jump with you. Yeah. And I'm gonna make you laugh while we're doing it. Yeah. And I'll be right there next to you. That's what I that's what I realized. That I actually do have that dog in me and I'm the same even when pressure's on me. Mm. You know, like I'll give you a small example. Talk to me. Sixty men were we haven't eaten all day. Mm. And these guys, they're, they're complaining, like, oh, like, I'm hungry. Like, when are they going to feed us and all that stuff? Yeah. And these people, they're kind of scared because it's like that sheep mentality. You're under, like, control of the drill sergeant. You stop thinking for yourself. You start, stop thinking for yourself. And yeah. I'm like, okay, like, <clears throat> I'm like, okay, why haven't you guys asked? Because there's some big guys. There's some big guys that you think that they're going to, yeah. you know what I mean, step up. Yeah, and, and say something. But those are the most scariest guys that, yeah. that are in the group. <laughs> and you're like, bro, go say something. Like, you're, like, you know, speak up. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to speak up? Okay. I'm going to speak up for you. Yeah. What do you guys want me to say? You guys, how do you guys feel? This, that? All right. So I'd go up and I'd be like, hey, like, you know, we haven't eaten or, hey, uh, this isn't working out. You know, these people are blah, 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 blah. You know, mm-hmm. I'd be, I'd, I'd speak up for the group. Yeah. We'd get punished. Oh, yeah. We'd definitely get punished. <laughs> hey, I'm in there doing push-ups too, though. Yeah. But, you know, I'm going to speak up whenever, you know, for the group or. If it's needed. Even if it's, uh, uh. Even if it's not the best interest, mm-hmm. I'm going to speak up because somebody has to do it. Yeah. And I, from, a, from early, from early on, this is the beginning. This is basic training. <laughs> I'm not a soldier yet. You as well. I was, you know, I was, yeah. you know, showing those characteristics of like, all right, like you guys don't want to lead. Mm-hmm. You guys all just want to be sheeps. Okay. Like what? Come on. Like if there's an easier way to do things, I'm going to, sh- I'm going to voice it out. Yeah. Respectfully. You know, you don't have to just follow the crowd. You have, there's other ways to do things. There's not just one way to do things. Yeah. You have to be all around. And from an early age, I'm like, you know what, like, yo, like, come on, like. So what was your experience like in the Army? How would you say overall, to sum it up? Overall, interesting. Mm. I would say interesting. Okay. There's a lot of ups and downs, and it's an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Um, you go through a lot of hardships. Um, you go through a lot of experiences that aren't normal. Yeah. But they are normal when you're in there. Mm-hmm. You know, waking up at four in the morning, staying awake for two days in a row. Mm. Two, three days in a row, actually. Um, you see a lot of death. You see a lot of uh, uh, people who, from all walks of life. Yeah. Uh, you see how their walks of life affects them. Yeah. And the way they lead. Yeah. And how somebody as a leader can affect your whole life. Yeah. And can essentially make you or break you. I know people that aren't here anymore because somebody who has a certain bias they grew up with. Mm was putting that on somebody else. And, you know, some people can't take the same stress as other people. It's the truth. And, you know, I have, in 2020, I had about four friends that, that committed suicide. And it's... Really? And that's a big... Uh, 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 it's a big factor of the Army, you know? Yeah, that's a big toll on you. How, yeah. how, did that, how much did that affect you? Um, I wouldn't say it didn't affect me, but it definitely... It wakes you up. Yeah. It wakes you up and you realize, like, in life one isn't year, anything to that play is, with. That is, in one year, that is In one heavy. year. Coronavirus. Yeah. That was around that time. 2020, yeah. that's when yeah. it happened. The pandemic, yep. Pandemic made a lot of people, when we were in the Army, they treated us almost like, almost like dogs, you know, in a way. Mm. Very, like, oh, like, you're in one room, you're staying there. Mm. Let me see your car. Let mm. me do this. Let me do that. Like, very, almost like prison style, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people can't take the pressure, the stress yeah. of that combined with a bunch of other stresses because you also have a personal life as a soldier. Yeah. And a lot of people neglect to realize that, you know, let's say y- y- your brother died, right, or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that because that's what actually happened to somebody. Mm-hmm. His family member died and he was not able to... Reach out. Reach out and he was emotionally just shocked. And then you have somebody here coming to you, not <clears throat> caring about what's happening to you. Mm. And that creates like a bubble. It's like pressure. Yeah. Either pressure you're gonna make diamonds, mm. or other people can't take it, and yeah, you know. But it's very unfortunate. But you know, like I said, the army is an up and down roller coaster. It was a good time, a great time. That's where I learned the most, mm-hmm. uh, and that's where I realized that you want to be more in life. Yeah. You want to get more out of life. You don't just wanna. You don't just wanna always be under somebody's thumb. You know, you wanna. Exactly. You know. You, you want to kind of open your wings. Yeah. And going through that, that mental stress and that physical stress, mm-hmm. and I call it slaving. I don't know. 
<laughs> I call it slaving. That slaving, you know, I, I still got scars on my back from that slaving. So from there, you got that dog in you. Yeah. What was your first business? Uh, my first business was a trucking company. Oh, really? Yeah. I was not expecting that. Semis. Okay. Yeah. What made you get into that? Well, uh, how old were you at that time? Uh, I was probably like 21, 22. Okay. 21, I think. Yeah. I was just getting out the army. Okay. Like, let me let me put it into perspective. I'm like, yeah. okay. I love to paint, paint the picture. Let me paint yeah. the picture for you guys. Yeah. Okay. So I'm about to get out the army. I'm seeing it a year before. Mm-hmm. I already know what's happening. Uh, actually, let me rewind one more year from that. Okay. I'm in South Korea, mm-hmm. Party Central. You already know. In South Korea, it's either going to come back with rank or come back without. Yeah. But while everybody's partying, uh, I'm working out and uh, learning about credit. Okay, love fixing that. Fixing my credit. Love that. And learning about businesses. Love I'm YouTubing. That. I'm a YouTube but why? Fan. Why did you get into that? Because I started realizing, okay, phase one Nobody is... Nobody told you? You just... No, I did. Look, I had a plan okay. before I joined the army. Okay, that's dope. I know I how to get out this. the deal. Hey, I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm like Lil Derek. I know how to get out the deal. <laughs> I need the platform. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I need the platform for real. Yeah. I went into the army for college education and networking. That's yeah. for networking, as many, meet as many people as I can, impact as many people as I can, and have as many people in my pocket yeah. as I can. Yeah. From a young age, I understood it's not what you know. It's who you know. It's who you know. I just that messed was a quick, that up. I just messed that that's up. That's okay. I'll do it one more time. I'll do it one more time. <laughs> do it again, for the do it again. Hey, from a young age, I learned it's not what you know. It's who you know. I found that out very, very, very early. Yeah, actually, do it one more time because that camera's looking at me. So I got do, you. Do it to this you. camera. I got you. Okay. That camera. Right. For, oh God! <laughs> Look, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, <laughs> oh God! Nah. From a very early. You know, from a very early age, I found out it's not what you know; it's who you know. Exactly. You know, so I immediately, and the way I found that out is seeing these guys that were 6'2", but skipping class, coming late to practice, and they get to play on Friday nights. Mm. That's how I found out. It's not what you know. Mm -hmm. It's how you look and who you are and how much friends there are with you and how much they know your parents. Yeah. So I took that trend into the Army. Okay. So it's about who I know. Okay. So I'm going to meet as many people as I can, as many powerful people as I can. I'm not just making uh, senseless relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting as many powerful people as I can. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get a college education for free. That's so beautiful, bro. To learn that at such a long, at long, su- such a young age. Yeah. That's beautiful, bro. So, like, I want to give you your flowers. Thank you. Before we get, continue on with this story, congrats to you, bro. Like, not many people take life and say, you know what? I'm going to be at the same page with time. Not many people do that. They yeah. wait for time to overwhelm them and be like, you know what? I got to pick it up now. Yeah. Um, and it goes back to how I said, uh, um, being from a immigrant family, yeah. you, they tell you, you're starting back. You're starting behind. Yeah. They're starting, the normal person, the average American starting here. You're starting from over here. Respectfully. You don't have the same leniency as them. Yeah. You can't go party. You can't do it. You can't yeah. do it. I know I, I, let's say, I know I'm bad at reading. I have to read more than others. Mm. I have to do math. It takes me longer to do math. Mm-hmm. I have to sit down and write it out. Yeah. You just get to do m- multiplication on your head. I don't. I have to write it out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And you have to start, re- you have to be true to yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to realize you're not, maybe you're not at the same level. You're not at the you're same not. level, but that's okay. Just fight harder. We, and a lot of people, when, when they say that, right, with yeah. that statement right there, which I want to harp, harp on, people that are born in America and they, their parents have a, have a lineage of being in America, you yeah. can go back and be like, oh, my... Pops went to school here. Was my on the mom Mayflower. went to school. Yeah, like you can go back to a lot of things. We don't have that. Like we have, my dad has property in Haiti, but like it's Haiti. Yeah. It's a third world country. So your parents have property in America. It's a lot more uh, tangible. Correct. So not that I'm talking down on my dad's uh, property. I'm thankful and I'm going there and I'm going to build mansions on it. But it's kind of like... You got to understand the race was not was not given for us in the beginning. So like we took off t- we took off sprinting. Yeah. Like I did not break. I know there was times where people were like yo D like yo Rich what's good bro? And I'm like nah, like there's something in me that won't let yeah. me rest. Yeah. So 
I can I can see it in you as well. Yeah, it's it's it's, and that's the thing. When you feel somebody, it's like uh, it's like you're in a room, isn't it? You're in a dark room, and once somebody that has that light. I call it the light, you know? Mm -hmm. You can see it. You can see the grind in somebody. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. like, yo, this guy. And is it like, gets me, you just want to hang around. Like, yeah, like, you're like, We're yeah. to be boys now. Yeah, like, yeah. You know? <laughs> no, for sure, bro. Like, once you, ha once you find people like that, you have to hang on to them, bro, because there's not many. Yeah. And you go, and you learn that through life, though. Mm -hmm. Meeting so many people. Mm -hmm. But let me go back to the army story real quick before Talk I forget, about right? It. Talk about it. We were at where uh, I, was, I, was in, I was in Korea. Okay. I was working out. People are partying, and I'm working out. When people are going to the club, like they're walking, they're in the base. They're walking to the taxi to get go to the club. Mm -hmm. I'm le I'm just now leaving the gym. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm just now doing my last mile. Yeah. From a 12 mile ruck. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm doing crazy shit. They know me as like the, you know, somebody who's like very, in the, even in the army, they they know I'm. I work hard. Yeah. Uh, but in, but like I said, uh, I had a plan. I'm there to execute a plan, mm -hmm. and I'm not about to let this be my only life. I hate having one option. Mm. I've learned that from very young. You can never put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. So basically, right, I'm in Korea. I'm working out a lot. I'm learning about business. I'm learning about credit. I'm, I'm a YouTube fanatic. Everybody who's starting a business knows that they go through that YouTube phase. YouTube University. YouTube University. Yeah. I'm eating it up. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I'm just like learning everything. Yeah. At the same time, I'm fixing my credit, calling mm -hmm. Bank of America, trying yeah. to get my credit lines, trying to do this, trying to do that, because I understand credit is power. Credit is so much power. I started understanding that, okay? Yeah. I get to America. I'm at uh, Texas, mm -hmm. El Paso, Texas. Everybody's buying Camaros, mm. buying this, buying <laughs> yeah. chargers. She goes to the you army. Get to the army. <laughs> You're getting a Camaro. <laughs> She's getting a Camaro, bro. You're getting a boat. Yeah. They're about to see me in downtown and fry me up for this one. But look, you're getting a boat, right? With yeah. high-ass APRs. 24 APR, 19% APR. And I'm like, yeah, nah. Like, uh, how much are you paying for that? Yeah. All right. And how much is your check? In the Army, we don't get paid a lot. I don't mm -hmm. know why people think in the Army we get paid a lot. We mm -hmm. don't get paid nothing mm -hmm. for what the amount of work we do. Respectfully. You know, and everything is calculated. Oh, they give you free food. They give you free, uh, free uh, uh, stay, you know, at a mm -hmm. place. In a dorm, yeah, they take it all out of our checks. Mm. It's all a lot of amounts, and you see it subtracted from your L oh, something really? called LES, which is your pay stub. I did not know that. Everything subtracted for to eat at the cafeteria mm -hmm. at the defect. That's what we call it. It costs three hundred and forty-seven dollars really? a month. <laughs> okay, I thought it was sir. I thought it was. It came with. I thought it came with it too. <laughs> That's crazy. But the finesse is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you say that you can't go because you have work. Mm -hmm. You have extra work that has that you can't make it to the hours. Yeah. So they give you all that money back. That's also for my guys that are still in the army. I would suggest you take note. Take note. Uh, that's a finesse as well. Yeah. Uh, free game. Free, free game. Free game. Free, free game, game. Free game. Free game. I'll give. I give. I'm gonna start giving a lot of free pointers now. Talk about now it. I'm about to start turning up with the free pointers. Talk about it. Boom. So now I'm in America. Okay. Back like I said, micro decisions is what made me who I am now. Mm. When you're buying that boat, when you were buying that boat, bro. I was like, okay, I done saved money because I came overseas. You know, overseas we get paid more because mm -hmm. we're in a hazardous area. Okay, I have a certain X amount of money. Okay, I'm going to buy my car outright. Mm -hmm. I bought a car outright instead of using my credit for a charger mm -hmm. or whatever the fuck <laughs> boat I wanted to get, right? Yeah. That everybody else was getting. Yeah. And I didn't get that. And my credit was still high. Yeah. You know, when you first get a car, your first inquiry is going to... Your, your, your credit's going to be zapped. It's going to ding it. You're done for yeah. a minute. For a good six to a year, you're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. The reason I'm not, this all comes up to this point right now. Okay. I'm still bit on my credit. Mm -hmm. And then I get this, this there's this officer. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a major. And she teaches me about budgeting. Mm. I was always good with money. But this is what sets me, this is what sets a president in my life of really good budgeting. Yeah. She goes like, hey, Ortega, I want to see your, pay st your bank statements. Bank statements? <laughs> what do you mean you want to see my bank statements? Oh, I want to, you know, uh, I want to see how you're doing, you know, financially, you know, because, yeah. uh, uh, you know, you're always talking about business and all this stuff. Yeah. I was always a business head, you know, because I come from Korea with all this knowledge, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm just yeah. talking all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, I was really scared and I was really nervous. I'm like, mm. damn, like, you know, I probably made some dumb decisions, you know, mm -hmm. here and there, micro, like, you know, dumb shit, you know, mm -hmm. probably bought more food than I should have or something like that. Yeah. But I brung it and then... You know, she really, she really gave me a stern 
she oh. really talked to me, like really snapped on me, actually. Like she really snapped on me. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, damn, like she snapped on me so hard, it made me into the rich guy I am now, bro. Wow. Like she hit me with the budgeting facts so hard. She's like, so you feel like you should be wasting X amount on food or X amount on this, X amount on that. Yeah. You shouldn't be doing that. She just went off on me on all my expenditures. And then after she went off on me, she taught me how to save my money. Yeah. The 30% rule. Yeah. How to, you know, put my uh, uh, money in a high yield savings account. How mm. to, she really s- s- set me up and, and really showed me that if I leave, live under my, ne- my means, yeah. she showed me if I lived under my means, I can really get whatever I want. Yeah. You got to stay down to get up. Stay down to get up. And that's a battle for some people right now. It's a battle. It's a ba- And it's a battle that you just know a lot of people that's down right now, but they want to look like they're up. Correct. And I'm just like, bruh, you just came to me about money. Yeah. You just bought a new car. It don't make sense. Yeah. Stay down. Get the car that's way below your means. Correct grind stack that bread and then purchase what when you finally can bask in your winnings buy it yeah it was a battle for me at first too being a young kid as well where i was just like nah man i can afford it for sure but but then then my dad would be like can you afford it or can you afford it right now and i was like "Ooh, can you afford it three times over yeah two times over no i can't you know, uh, uh, so after that talk with her, that talk really set a precedent yeah. of budgeting, of strict budgeting. Yeah. Okay. Cause I already know. Okay. Like I'm already, okay. I, I try to be an officer. This is how the story. I try to be an officer. It didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Um, I took, uh, I took the ASVAB again. Mm-hmm. I had a one Oh five, right. To be an officer, to get into green and gold Academy, you have to have a one ten. Mm-hmm. I took the test and I had a one Oh nine. So I didn't get in. You didn't. I didn't get in. What by one point? Jeez. I tried to get into West Point. Uh, I didn't. I got denied. But they said if I submit my application next year, uh, I would more than likely get in. Mm-hmm. But for that, I'd have to resign four more years. Jeez. And that's a fifty-fifty chance. If you know anything <laughs> about the army, you know ain't shit. A hundred percent, unless that shit's in paper. Yeah. So okay, I'm like okay. So I'm already starting to see like okay, what am I gonna do? Mm-hmm. But I already have all this knowledge and business and all. So okay. I need to start learning about properties and mm-hmm. all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And this is where micro decisions come in play. Yeah. Uh, I was like, okay, I need to buy a property. That's how I'm going to start it off. I'm going to save my money. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start a business and buy property. Yeah. Um, I started asking these, these people who've been in the Army for 25 years, mm-hmm. 20 years, sergeant majors, lieutenant colonels, majors, officers, Enlisted. I'm like, hey, how do I buy a house? I want to do this. You know, I'm thinking about getting out the army. And, you know, they really start to spook you. One, this will really set me to not stay in the army. Mm-hmm. You ask these people and they don't have much knowledge. You know, mm-hmm. you ask them like, hey, like, you know, this is what the reason I'm so successful now yeah. is because I ask older people mm-hmm. and I learn from them. Yeah. I'm not ignorant. Learn I don't from, know it all. You learn from their mistakes. I learn from their mistakes. I'm yeah. very, I'm very an- analytical. Yeah. So I go, I ask these people, these people who I work for, because I'm in, in command group, so I'm working with them. And I ask them, hey, like, uh, out of these 25 years, like, you know, can you give me some tips? Like, mm-hmm. what do you recommend on, like, you know, when it comes to buying a home or doing this? Or, you know, is the army worth it, you know? Because mm-hmm. you're in that point where you're like, I'm going to leave the gang, you know? Because mm-hmm. you're a family, really. That's your family. Yeah. You're in there. You're away. You go through really hard things. Sleeping outside for 30 days, doing random things that you would never see in your life with people so you start it becomes a family for real we're suffering and you start asking these people hey like leaders that you think are smart and thing but they really are you know I, I ask these people hey what can I get out of x y and z and they want to have an answer for me yeah most of these people do 25 years in the army they'd have three divorces mm-hmm. six kids that hate them because they're always away Damn. a mediocre home and a mediocre car bad back bad knees mm. In my head, you have to make a decision. Is this what I want out of my life? Mm. And then these people have 25 years in the army and somebody who has more rank than them, not more years than them, more rank than them comes and they still get bitched. Mm. So you did 25 years. And you're still getting talked down to. And you're still to. getting talked down to? Oh, no. Nah. You're still getting talked down to and I'm making X amount or I have this many people under me? Not I. Come on, bro. <laughs> you really start to, bro, what? Yeah. You start seeing a guy that every over 2,000 people listen to this person. Mm. And then somebody comes that has a better position than them. Yeah. And they have to have their hands behind their back. Yes, sir. No, sir. Uh, 
scared. Mm-mm. Almost like they're my rank, and I just came in the other day. Yeah. So 25 years, you think I'm going to be like that? That's where I decided. I'm like, okay, nah, this ain't for me. <laughs> this for guy me. doesn't even, he can't even tell me about a mortgage or how to use my loans. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't really tell me anything about real life. They can only tell me about reg- army regulation, but that's yeah. not life. Yeah. There's life outside the army. Yeah. And I was like, okay, but so I'm going to go buy a property. So I started looking for properties. Yeah. And my credit is like a 760. Mm. You know why? Micro decisions. I didn't buy that big ass boat. <laughs> when I went into the army... I didn't buy the boat, so my credit is booming. Yeah. I always kept my credit low. Under 30% is the goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I didn't always max it out. Mm-hmm. I was very smart with it. Um, I started getting credit lines from other people, buying credit lines. I started investing into my credit. And boom, I bought. I got pre-approved for half a mil. Really? On a home at 21 years old. 20 years old, I That's think. That's beautiful. 20, 21, 21. And before I got out the army, I closed on the property. That's beautiful. Uh, then after that, I had an X amount of money saved up for the business I wanted to start outside the army because I was TikTok. I was TikTok brain too. Yeah. TikTok was lit around that time. Yeah. At that time, remember, trucking was the biggest thing everybody talked about. Everybody wanted to be a box trucker. truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Learn from my lesson, guys. Yeah. Dig deeper than what social media tells you. Yeah, it's not all. If they're talking about it, you're too late. Yeah, that's exactly what it. it that's exactly what stocks. If they're talking about stocks, you're done. <laughs> don't do it. You're done. <laughs> if TikTok is talking about it, you're done. Do not yeah. invest your yeah. cheese. No, you're gonna lose it all. Yeah, unless the community is like three hundred. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. But if it's like you see it a lot, that's usually when you should not invest. Look, in. I'm gonna say it right here. You're not special. I'm not special. Mm. We're all normal people. Mm. Everybody watching this is a normal person. You're at home right now. You know, you bleed. You think this is the same. We, we, weren't, we weren't born with millions of dollars in our bank account. No. We're not trust fund babies. No. That's where it works. You know, TikTok, yeah. you know, TikTok businesses work when you have hella funding. Check this out. Okay. Boom. Let's get into the meat and bones on how I lost my first business. Talk about it. Uh... Everything is saturated, bro. Like I said, it's not all what we think. It was a saturated business. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a lot of people just like me getting into it at that time. Uh, When you don't know how to run a trucking company, uh, you start getting desperate Mm. because you you have you already invested a certain amount, so you want to get as many loads as possible. Yeah. So now you start lowballing yourself because it's all it's all on a rate on a market on a on a load board. Yeah. It's an app. You go on an app and you see a bunch of loads. Okay, your train is going from here. You're sorry, your truck is going from here to here. Yeah. Uh, there's a load here for this X amount. Yeah. And you're going on there and you're, and you're bidding. It's all bid wars. Oh, is it? It's bid wars. Okay. Whoever gets, you know, the best rate wins and the broker is going to accept the person who accepts the lowest rate. Yeah. The broker is the person who puts it on the load board. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, they don't know how so to run a to business. So to break it down to, for trucking, because okay. I've seen it. I've seen yeah. TikTok videos. I've mm-hmm. watched the YouTube <laughs> the classes. So there's someone that loads it to the app. Yes, and that's and called a broker. And you did what exactly? And I'm the person. I'm the business owner, and I'm also the dispatcher. People, You're the dispatcher. I'm the okay. dispatcher. Okay, yeah. so you're sending uh, truck drivers. No, I own the trucks. I bought my first semi truck. Yeah. I don't have my CDL. I don't know how to drive a shift. Yeah. Okay. Before I left the army, mm-hmm. I bought a semi truck over there in Texas. Okay. I did market research and Texas trucks are very cheap. Mm-hmm. I found a semi truck. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to drive stick. I don't know anything. I am talking to the guy and he gives me good vibes and I buy the truck. Yeah. I don't even know. I haven't even left the army yet. Yeah. I live in Florida. Yeah. I'm in Texas. Yeah. How am I going to get this truck all the way from over there? I don't even have my CDL. Yeah. When there's a will, there's a way. There's a will, there's a way. And I'm God talking about, I'm, yeah, I'm going after work, after five, going to check the semi truck, going to check different, I'm looking at different semi trucks, paying mechanics to go check the trucks, mm-hmm. let me know if they're good. Yeah. And I eventually got, I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I did it, I did it. I just did one that was okay. I needed some work, but it was okay. Okay. Boom. So now I had that semi truck sitting in the yard somewhere. I'm still dealing with the army, getting out the army, yeah. figuring out what I want to do with my life mm-hmm. and, you know, doing all this stuff. Uh, and then I get out the army. I fly to, because the, the army pays for your one flight home. Okay. When you leave the army. Okay. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take my flight home. I'm going to go home and then I'm going to. Come back and get the truck. Come back and get the truck. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know how to drive stick. Yeah. 
Okay, so now I have to set up my whole trucking company. It's not set up yet. Yeah. It's all in the process. I'm not doing it. I'm like, I'm like running forward, you know, because I'm yeah. jumping into everything. Yeah. And um, I hire somebody to go get the truck. I fly with him. I fly him out. I'm 21 years old, guys. This guy was 42. Yeah. Uh, I fly him out, and we go get the truck, and I drive with him beside him. And I, Wait, did you know this guy? I didn't know this guy. I hired him. I started my trucking company, you know? I hired him. I went on Indeed and I put an ad out there and I was doing interviews. I'm 21, you know? I was at the Army. I ain't gonna lie. But it was like a costume, but you're putting on a costume. Like, Bruh. This is weird. So, how was that moment? You were like, yo, this, I need you to drive me back. <laughs> <laughs> We gonna uh, talk this whole way through. We're gonna talk. There's this guy. I don't know this guy from a can of paint. Yeah. So I settled in. I settled back in at home. Mm -hmm. I start setting up the trucking company, getting my DOT, getting all my stuff, getting my license plate, all this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, bro. I put in an ad on Indeed, a listing. Yeah. I need a truck driver paying one thousand one hundred dollars a week. Like, a hell of people hit me up. I start interviewing people, and I finally get one. Fire. Okay. Boom. I'm like, hey, we're going to start this. We're going to fly out. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go. Pause. I know a lot of people are probably questioning this right now. Is mm -hmm. anybody, your partner, are helping you do this? No. All by myself. Okay, keep going. This is, there is somebody who led me onto this path. Okay. His name is uh, Vincent Montgomery. Okay. Uh, during the Army, uh, there'd be times where we go on something called a... Uh, you go to training, training mm -hmm. camps, basically, for yeah. 30 days. Yeah. And during those training camps, you're in the desert. You know, you're sleeping outside. You're doing a bunch of crazy shit that you would never think of. Yeah. You're training to go to war. Yeah. And he starts talking to me about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. He's really the one that tells me, yo, I'm going to get my truck, too. He starts putting the seed in my head. Yeah. He doesn't even know what he's doing. He doesn't even know what he's doing. Yeah. But he does know what he's doing. But yeah. he doesn't at the same yeah. time. And every day we're talking about it for 30 days straight. Even after that, we start talking about it, talking yeah, about yeah. it. And he's the one that really put that seed in my head mm -hmm. on how to do things and how to go about things. I just actually did it. Yeah. So I'm back home and I'm doing everything we talked about. Yeah. <sighs> Getting everything. I'm excited. I'm doing this. I'm putting all this money. I have, it's me, myself, and I. Yeah. Me and my credit cards. That's yeah. my best friend. Discovery Bank is my best friend. Yeah. Amex is my best friend. Yeah. And I'm doing it. It's all like, bro, it's all like a movie. Like, it's all fake, but it's real. Yeah. I have a semi truck. Yeah. This thing could kill people. Yeah. And I'm 21, just came out the army. Like, I'm just a kid. <laughs> I'm a kid doing this, bro. And I'm hiring people and I'm doing all this. Yeah. And it's just really is getting step by steps. Yeah. Step by step. Okay, I have a checklist. Okay, check one, check fire. two, check That's three. So far. All right, I'm going to get this flight, go back to my hometown, the yeah. army base yeah. area, sleep at my friend's house for a day, mm -hmm. drive the truck back with him. How did it fail? Uh, started getting overwhelming. Um, you need a lot of money when you're in the trucking industry. Okay. They you, don't talk about that. They don't talk about they don't that. Talk about you, need, <laughs> you need thousands of dollars wow. to get into the industry. Because everything is my overhead cost. That's what really destroyed me. Okay. Uh, let's say a tire. A tire costs 2K to change. When you're on the road. What? Yeah. 2K. Nah, then let's say a radiator. <laughs> Back it up. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Take a the radiator. Truck. Yeah, it's done. Your grits. Like, if you don't have no money saved, okay, look, it didn't really fail. Okay, when things go bad in the truck, you have to fix it and it becomes expanded when it's on the load and it's on the highway and those repairmen come on the side of the road and repair things. Mm -hmm. I didn't calculate how much overhead before I started the business you would need. I had enough money to run the business, but not maintain it mm. if things go wrong. Mm. You always have to prepare for where you're not accounting for yeah prepare for a surprise it's hard to do right yeah i'm asking i'm telling you prepare for something you don't know is gonna happen yeah how can you do that you don't you don't <laughs> but you do Check but you out. do gotta fail first gotta fail yeah this is where i learned you know i had x amount of money in my bank account i was up yeah dude i okay i moved into a penthouse over here in kissimmee really i had a three bedroom i had a 20 foot ceiling all this type of stuff I'm, my truck's going this is where it goes wrong uh, your driver leaves you. Oh, your driver dipped. My driver dipped. I'm on my second driver. Why did you? Do you know why your driver dipped? You get better opportunity. There's always you're always getting uh, offered more opportunities. Truck drivers, everywhere. they like NBA players. They just get traded. Get traded, bro. <laughs> if you have an employee, do not fall in love with your employee because mm. they're under their own self interest. Respectfully, 
And it's okay. I understand that. It's part of business. Yeah. I learned it at that moment. But at the time, I was like, wow, what the fuck? Like, he yeah, betrayed like, me. I thought we was I thought we were homies, bro. Yeah, like, what's going on? He betrayed me, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, um, basically, things started getting too expensive. I had a lot of money in my bank account, but I couldn't spend it all because for fuel, a thousand bucks. Mm. This, the, uh, 500, a mm. thousand here. Your employee, 1,500, 2,000. Yeah. This, that, 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 that. I started becoming very stressed. Mm. Truck started breaking down. Mm. Truck driver calls me one day. Hey, Hefe, you know the... the tr- <laughs> no, do it again. I can, hey, Hefe. <laughs> boss, I think the truck's going to blow up, boss. <laughs> like, Yo, what do you mean by that, bro? Like, what do you mean by that? He's like, dude, you know, I, I set my truck because I started... Okay. Boss, I think the truck's going to go. I think the truck's going to blow up, bro. <laughs> it's got to like, go, boss. I what don't do you know. mean by that? It's like 2 a.m. Look, when you're running a trucking company, when you're running a trucking company, the worst thing you want to do... Is get phone calls in the middle of the night. Yeah, you're not sleeping. When you, yo, when you have a load out there, bro, you're not sleeping. When you hear that phone, bro, you're like, "Oh my god, please don't let, tell me my truck blew up or oh some crazy god. shit." It's that easy that something can go wrong. So, with the truck? so many things. Really? Think about it. Think about it. I'm 21. Yeah. Uh, you're having a random guy drive your vehicle that you invested hella money into. You have insurance that it can cost over. The insurance is covering over a million dollar. You're carrying other person's freight. Mm. The freight can be estimated at half a mil to a mil. Yeah. And you're a kid and you're in charge of everything. Yeah. No matter what happens, you have any, you can have a hundred workers, bro. Yeah. At the end of the day, this is what sets you apart. You're the owner and you will be accountable for whatever happens. Jeez. Forever your employee does, you will be accountable. And that's stress. That's un, unthinkable stress. Like you're like, you're tense. Yeah. Cause you're scared. Yeah. Cause anything that happens, will be your fault he hit somebody he killed somebody let's say he's drunk it's a human being you know yeah psychology is very important in these games yeah he's a human being he can wake up one day and just want to go get beer it's a saturday these guys are out for married long periods of time yeah. and i'm just like talking to him from a phone <laughs> i'm like a siri on your phone hey you can really tell me now yeah and slide and rob my truck and do whatever you want <laughs> and do what you, you go want crazy. yeah but it's a, a trust factor but you know he called me one day and he tells me Hey, like, you know, your truck is going to blow up, bro. Like, your shit's smoking. Like, it's not a, it's not this, because I had it on a steady load in the sands of New Mexico hauling frac sand. Mm. Frac sand is what, you know, when oil, when people, when the United States is digging for oil, Mm -hmm. and so oil doesn't come out, they put frac sand in it to Mm -hmm. absorb the oil in there. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't just splur everywhere. And so they need trucks to transport sand back and forth. Yeah. Because I wanted a steady route. Yeah. Uh. You know, you're in the mountains, you're in the desert, and it's messing up the truck and the, you know. Yeah. The truck is being forced because it's heavy, heavy loads, and it's, basically, the truck was going to blow up. Uh, the, the, my driver told me, hey, like, you know, your truck is. It's, it's done, though. It's done, bro. Yeah. To be honest, I'm going to trust this truck to survive another week. Wow. You're hearing this, and you're like, oh, my God. I'm in this new penthouse. I'm with my girl. She's mm-hmm. arguing because I'm like stressed and I'm not really, you know, paying attention. Yeah. And uh, and I'm like, wow. At the time, check this out. Plot twist. This is where it happens. Overwhelming stress. I uh, remember when I said in the beginning of the pod, I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket. Yeah. I'm also. Uh, I also have my property. Mm-hmm. I have a fourplex. Mm hmm. Uh, this is four units. That's mm-hmm. the max amount that so the VA can you give house, you. You house hacked, yeah. Correct. Uh, I'm going through an eviction at the time, too. I'm evicting Wait. one of my tenants. My boy was going through. How old are you? I'm 25 now. No, how old were you during like that? like 21, 22. 21, 22. Hey, boss, the truck is going to explode. explode and the eviction. Yeah. And I had a, a box truck as well. Um, I had a box truck, and I was running it through Amazon. Mm-hmm. You know, my other boxers will, will probably know what I'm talking about, but I was running it through Amazon. You know, remember that Amazon mm-hmm. loads? Uh, and it wasn't as consistent as I thought either. So mm. that's just sitting there. Jeez. My truck over there is, is blowing up. Yeah. I'm going through an eviction process with my tenants. Damn. I'm young as fuck. And you're arguing with your girl. And time. I'm arguing with my girl. Wow. Because I'm not giving her more time, right? I'm not, no, respectfully, you're, no, I'm you're not, overloaded right now. You know, I, I'm one of those people, you know, when it's time to get sturdy, yeah, I'm cool, but it's like, how can I, you know, when you're doing business, you become to get numb mm-hmm. to things because you're here, you're like the problem solver. Yeah. You're the dad. You're the dad. There's nobody behind me. Yeah. I'm looking behind me. 
You see, the, the exact same people behind me is the exact same people that are there when you have to pay bills, bro. Yeah. Everybody says they're there for you, but realistically, they're not, bro. They're not. And you start really quickly realizing that when you're going through these issues. You're like, yeah. oh my God, I'm going through an eviction process. My truck is blowing up. Mm -hmm. My female is going crazy. Yeah. And I'm in a brand new $3,000 a month, mm -hmm. three-bedroom apartment with 30-foot ceilings. Because mm, I thought nice. I was a baller. That sounds right? nice. That that sound nice. nice. That's I ain't going to hold you. That sounds good. <laughs> it was playing out right, bro. Yeah. It was playing out perfectly, Put, bro. Windows? Put the ceiling windows? Bro, what? Ceilings were... The windows were... Bing bow. Going crazy. Mm. Wrap around balcony. Uh, I'm going ooh, crazy. I'm 22. Ooh, yeah. I'm doing myself. <laughs> Hold on now. Hold this, <laughs> come on. Talk about it. Uh, anyways. Um, anyways, back yeah, to... Uh, all right, boom. So I'm going through an ex exert amount of stress. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, okay, so I have to think. I'm, I'm asking a lot of people, like, advice. I'm getting... I'm trying to... I'm like thinking as well, and I'm 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 asking different mentors. I'm asking people, what should I do? You know, mm -hmm. the reason my my real in real estate when it comes to the fourplex, uh, when you're young in business, people won't respect you. Yeah, they won't respect you. They'll treat you differently. They'll try think you're, you're gullible. They'll they'll think a bunch of things that you know that you, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll try to little boy you. Yeah. They'll try to little boy you. No matter how much time, all the army things I did, everything, I'm a grown ass man. I've been taking care of myself for years. Yeah. I've seen crazy shit. Yeah. But people don't care. Yeah. They just look at you and they see a young kid. Yeah. Young, pretty boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, who the fuck does this guy think he is? Yeah. And they don't respect you. Yeah. My tenant was late. Over a week late on rent. Yeah. I let him keep the same rent as before because mm -hmm. you have to do it. He was paying 700 or 900 for a whole studio apartment. That's Unheard of numbers. What? Yes. $700. Yes. I'm getting finesse. Actually, I lied. 500 bucks. 500? 500 bucks. That's wicked. He's, he's a little bit C now. I'm being very patient with him. He's over 70 to 80 years old. Mm -hmm. I feel kind of bad, you know? I'm, mm -hmm. And I go there and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm about to post the five-day notice. Mm-hmm. Remember, I'm doing everything in-house. I don't have a property management. Mm -hmm. It's just me, myself, and I. Yeah. And my girl, I took her along. Yeah. Just to get some Starbucks in the morning and eat Chick-fil-A and ride along with me. Yeah. I'm you living that life I'm right living now. that life, right? I ain't but it's, hold you. it's cool. Yeah. It, it, it sounds cool. Yeah. But it's not cool. It's not that cool when it's like when the pressure's there. It's tough. You know, I'm not happy. It's like, you know, I'm trying to make it, bro. Yeah. I'm outside the army. The army's not there no more. It's yeah. scary. Yeah. So I'm there. I'm about to post the five-day notice. Mm-hmm. I'm knocking on the door. I'm trying to talk to him before I post. I'm like, hey, man, like, you know, hey, can you, like, you know, I, I have to pay my mortgage, you know, like, all this X amount. I lost one of my tenants. My other, my other uh, apartment is gone because I had 10 people living in a two-bedroom. Mm -hmm. And they left and didn't pay anything. Oh, snap. Because I'm just taking over the mess from the other guy. Yeah. In the state of Florida, you have to respect it. Like, you can't just kick somebody out just because you buy a new property. Yeah, you I have to respect that, whoever's yeah. there. Yeah. And the, and the lease that's in place. Mm -hmm. So I basically, I got a mess on my hands and I'm dealing with that mess and dealing with my businesses. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling him, hey, can you like, you know, look out for me, trying to get some sympathy out of him. Mm -hmm. And you know what he tells me? Mm -hmm. He says, fuck you, I'm not paying anything. Oh. In my face. And I look at him and I'm like, you know, old me, an older me would have like spazzed out. Yeah. You know, I would have lashed out, but this is the real world. Yeah, it's to the point now. I've already done so many things and and paid so many things that th I'm kind of numb. It's like okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to just. It's just in business, you get to a point where you don't feel things. You're just doing it. Yeah, because that's what you have to do. It's like paying your rent. Yeah, you're just paying your rent because yeah. you have to pay your rent no matter what. Yeah. Okay, you said fuck me. I have to evict you. Posted the five day notice. Mm -hmm. I go to court mediation. He's trying to use the old man. Uh, Card. Card. He's seen now all this stuff. But when you're telling me, fuck you, and not paying my rent for two months. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, evictions will last two to, two to three months. Jeez. So when you're going through the eviction, he's not paying your rent. Jeez. Uh, you're going through all that process. I'm going through the truck failing. Okay, so I fly the guy out here. My worker. Mm -hmm. uh, the truck stays over there. Mm -hmm. I pay him one more. He, he leaves. He leaves. He abandons me. My worker abandons me. My second worker abandons me. I didn't fly him out here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I'm remembering, you know, it's like, yeah, it's I didn't back. fly him out here. He, he, he abandoned, oh. bro. He came, he came here and he told me, hey, like I left there, like, you know, 
I was out there for too long or give mm. me a dumb excuse. I'm like, hey, look, I'll pay you one more week just to go get my truck. Yeah. Like, please. He goes and gets my truck. Oh, he does? He does. He's a nice guy. Shout he out to him. He didn't have to do it. <laughs> and I meet with him and I'm like, hey, look, I'm probably going to shut the company down. Um, he's kind of mad. He does a few things that cost me a lot of money. Such as? Uh, he abandoned the truck. Yeah. That means I have to pay for it to be stored. Yeah. That means X, Y, and Z. It means I got to pay, you know, a yeah. bunch of things that are with that. Um, <clears throat> he left the load. I have to pay for the load yeah. that's on there. Yeah. You know, I breached contract. I breached it. Not him. Remember, yeah. I'm the owner. Jeez. So I have to pay out all these people, all these things, and get other companies to get my load that I have on my truck. And I'm, I'm going through the eviction. It's like, Zzzz. that's where the stress and the weight comes from. I gained a lot of weight. An excess mm. amount of weight during that time. The picture, the video you showed me of how much weight you gained, bro. I, I can see that it's your face. Yeah. But that doesn't look like the same person at all. Yeah. And that's stress, bro. Wow. Stress. I wasn't even eating. It wasn't even about the eating habits. The eating habits did increase a little bit. The workouts did stop because I'm somebody who needs to work out three times a day, two times a day to be active, mm -hmm. to be like on point with my body. Yeah. But once that increased to one time. A day, then increased to two, three times a week. Yeah. Then two times a week. It wasn't it just, enough. It just all overloaded. Overloaded. Stress became made me this way. And then my girl's arguing. And then, you know, I have money, of course, to eat. Mm -hmm. I'm going to feed my girl. Mm -hmm. And if she's eating, I'm going to eat too. <laughs> I can't just let eat. you eat ribeye steak. Steak yeah. in my front of my face. Ragu. Yeah. And I'm not about to order my that. ragu. I'm fake hungry right now, too. You feel right? me? I'm, <laughs> my mom's getting nice. watery thinking about yeah. the steak she was eating. Yeah. And, you know, over that time, I, I got super big. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a lot of the stress multitasking all these businesses. Uh, I then drove my truck, truck back, mm -hmm. and then I sold it. Mm -hmm. I shut my trucking company down. Okay. And you don't just shut a trucking company down. You have to start paying everything out. The insurance was $1,000 a month. Oh. You have to still pay the premiums. Oh. A, this is a business. It's commercial. Everything's commercial. Yeah. Everything's multiplied. Yeah. Now that sack I had is starting to go down. It's starting to dwindle. Yeah. Yeah. It's starting to dwindle very quickly. Yeah. I'm okay. I have to do something. Now, pause. I know I'm like prolonging okay. the story. That's no, okay. But people that know you got money don't know this side of that. The, the, Correct. So they're still thinking you got the bread. Yeah. And they still. <laughs> yeah, they're thinking, they think this is a fairy tale. Yeah. They don't realize how many bills you have. Yeah, how they, many don't. they don't. They don't take have. to account everything else that comes with it. Correct. Yeah. They don't take to account the credit card debt. Yeah. They don't take to account your bills. Yeah. They only care about themselves. Yeah. The human psyche is very, very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. You start learning a lot about people through business. Yeah. So, boom. What are the businesses that you have now? Currently, I have a smoke shop. Okay. Where is that? Uh, on the Orange Blossom Trail. It's called Pubzilla. Okay. Uh, if you want to get the best vapes, uh, most affordable in Orlando, mm -hmm. come by. I'm that guy. I might not be there, but my employees will definitely take care of you. They will definitely serve you with the best and utmost customer service. And if they don't, just give me a ring. <laughs> I'll make sure it gets fixed by tomorrow. Yeah, love it. Love uh, it. But this, this, let me tell you how everything leads up to where I am now. Where you are now. Um, like I said, the human psyche is very important. Mm -hmm. You start doing business with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, you start going into, you, you know, I'm in the arcade room. You know, I'm meeting people. I'm trying to get mentors, all types of things. Yeah. Um, one of my, one of the businesses I go into as I'm, transitioning from the trucking company because I need to do something. Yeah. I can't say still. Remember, I have rent to pay. I have all this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I need to do something. So I start going into government contracting. Mm. And I start meeting people in that space. In the Army, I used to be the one to pay for people to do things. Everything, okay, let me give you guys a rundown. Free game. Mm -hmm. Everything the United States does is subcontracted yeah. to another company, to an entity like mine or yours. Yeah. Everything. The road being fixed, that's a company. That's, that could mm -hmm. be you. The phones that the government uses, a lot of government employees, high officials, they get phones. They can't use their regular home phones. Mm -hmm. you, you get a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That's paid, given by mm 
a company like mine goes and buys a dozen iPhones from Apple or a wholesaler of Apple iPhones, mm-hmm. and then you go and sell it to the government for five, ten yeah. X mm-hmm. desks, furniture, yeah. the cars, everything is a business. Yeah. Everybody is getting paid. Yeah. That is why we went to war in Afghanistan because of the uh, industrial war complex. Mm-hmm. It makes money. Mm-hmm. The clothes we wear is money. Yeah. Everything is money, itemized. Yeah. And everything, everybody's making money from it. Yeah. That is why the gov cheese is always the best cheese because <laughs> it's for sure. The government will always pay you. Yeah. So I start meeting people. Mm-hmm. I start getting into the space, the government contracting space. I start doing contracts here and there. I also start a construction company mm-hmm. all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is where I start taking my first L. Mm. Uh, my mentor, um, he, we did a, we did a contract, a catering contract. Mm-hmm. He offered, he told me to send him six k. Boom, another free game, guys. When you're paying, this is why the game is rigged. This game is a monopoly. <laughs> it's a monopoly. This is not real. Yeah. Check this out. Before you get paid by the gov. You have to put up your own money. Yeah. Example. I got a landscaping contract. Mm-hmm. I have to find a landscaper in the area to do the, the, to do the landscaping, the work itself, because I'm not a landscaper. Yeah. So I have to pay him first mm-hmm. to do it. And then I have to wait X amount of time for the government to pay me. Mm. Free game, guys. Don't spend all your cheese, because he will be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this is where budgeting comes in. Yeah. This is where the stories I was telling you from the lady yeah. is coming in. I don't touch all my cheese. That's yeah. why the trucking company, that's why I came out kind of, you know, okay. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't touch the money I was seeing coming in all the time. Yeah, I would see thousands of dollars and I wouldn't pick at it. Yeah, That's the thing. That's the discipline. That's the difference between me and other business owners. They pick at their money. Yeah. Pick, 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 pick. Yeah. Next thing you know, zero, 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 zero. <laughs> debt, 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 debt. <laughs> lost zero, zero, lost, zero. lost, lost. <laughs> yeah. That's a difference. Mm-hmm. You see, micro decisions. The first micro decision was I didn't buy that big ass boat at a 26% interest rate. Yeah. So now I have good credit. Yeah. Second micro decision. Okay. Buying the property, knowing yeah. what you want to do in life. Yeah. Those are small decisions that pivoted my whole life. Mm. Beginning micro decision. Remember, I told you I didn't drink in high school. Mm hmm. I didn't drink in the army either. Mm-hmm. When everybody was getting wasted, wasting their money in Korea, yeah. I was saving my money. Mm. Liquor costs. It does. Going to the bar costs money. It all adds up. And I don't have that. <laughs> Your addictions, vaping. Mm-hmm. Guys, I own a vape store and I don't vape. I was going to ask. I didn't know if you wanted to speak about that. Really? I don't vape. I might hit it to look cool sometimes just to, because people kind of try to test you, but you will never see me. I do not have one in my pockets. Yeah. And I have thousands of them. Yeah. People, I know people who can't even sit still without, where's my vape? Mm-hmm. You know, it's an addiction. Mm-hmm. Question, a tough yeah. question for you. Yeah. Um, do you feel bad supplying to that addiction? No, it's business. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's business. <laughs> right. <laughs> somebody's going to do it. That's a fact. And somebody's been doing it. That's a fact. I'm not adding to it. Mm-hmm. I'm just continuing the supply, baby. <laughs> That's like, am I going to feel bad because you didn't pay your rent? Mm. I'm going to evict you. Mm. I have to do it. It's part of business. Yeah. It's going to Because be if there. you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. It's, it's like, it's an enterprise. It's like, you can't feel bad. You can't feel bad. And like, it's legal. I'm not doing anything illegal. That's a fact. I'm supplying you with yeah. what you need. You're the one that's coming into my store. Yeah. I'm not forcing you. Yeah. You have to make decisions. See, I look at it from a number standpoint, a spreadsheet, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to business. Mm-hmm. If it's making the money it needs to be made and the numbers are there mm-hmm. and it's legal and As I'm not doing supp- anything if, immoral. If there's a supply and demand for it. Supply and demand. Yeah, I get that. People sell guns. Guns I get kill that. people, but guns also protect people. Yeah. People are dying for you guys right now with guns. Yeah. But people are also murdering people. What, you're, the guy who's making the guns is going to feel guilty? Yeah. 
if I kill somebody with my shoe, I'm a bad because I made. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, I get People that. Get, you know I, mean? I had to. If I, it wouldn't be me if I didn't ask. Yeah, the yeah. You know, it's it's part of life. You know. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go deeper. Do the doctors that put you on these pills, these pharma, that are getting checks from these pharmaceutical companies, you think they feel bad? No. When they're putting you on these pills? Because you get addicted to them. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, you know, somebody has to do it, and you know. I, I prefer, you know, I, I get a little bit of, the, of, cheese the, from of the cheese. You know, you be. Yeah. I get it. Somebody's going to do, you know, everybody tries to play the moral game. Yeah. And that's where it comes in. The moral game, the morality game. Yeah. But, you know, they'll be, they'll morality try to put me down. But, you know, once we start putting the flash out in your life. Yeah. Let's see if you're living morally correct. But besides that, you also have um, a construction business. Yes. I watched some videos on that. It was kind of cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what got you started with that? Well, I speak Spanish. I'm Dominican. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of uh, minority friends. Okay. Specifically, my Mexican brothers. Yeah. And a lot of them come to me needing work. Yeah. You know, I speak English and I also speak Spanish. So it taps me into a big community, my community, my Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. So these people need jobs. They don't have anything to... You know, I'm trying to help people. That's really where it started. I try to help this one guy. Mm -hmm. He needs a job. He comes from Mexico. He just came from Mexico over no more than a month. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, look, I know how to do this. I was an engineer. I know how to do architect. I know how to do everything. I know how to build a house. Mm -hmm. Everything. Help me find jobs. Like, I need work and all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm a marketing guru. I'm American. You know, I, I do business. Like, this is what yeah. I do. Okay. Yeah. So you want to give me labor, and I'll handle up everything else. Contracts and, you know, because... Let me give the viewers another game. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be an apprentice for 20 years to make money out of something. Mm, elaborate. Elaborate. You don't have to be the guy putting these floors to make money from these floors being installed. Talk about it. There's a lot of ignorance nowadays or a lot of, uh, you know, a stigma where people say, oh, no, like you don't know how to do that. How are you going to get into that? You, mm. I don't have to know how to do that. <laughs> you have to know how to do that. <laughs> I don't that have to. That was the hardest thing you said this whole podcast. That was tough. I don't got to know how to do that, brother. <laughs> you do. You do. <laughs> Yo, everybody has a position in life. I don't need to know. I don't need to know that, bro. You do. This is the life you chose. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. And I'll pay you to figure that shit out, bro. <laughs> this is why you're here. Yeah. Very early, you have to understand your position in life and know what you're coming with and what you put to the table. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how to put a floor. Shit, but you need this contract, right? Mm -hmm. I know how to get a contract. Mm -hmm. I know how to sign a contract. I know how to get an estimate. I know how to use the computer. I know how to send an invoice. I know how to get people that need your services. Mm -hmm. See, there's a difference between a business owner and a laborer. Yeah. A lot of people, look, this is from experience, from me. This is, you guys can take it or not. You cannot be you cannot be putting this table on and also marketing your company hmm. and also sending an invoice hmm. and also responding to, to emails hmm. and also on phone calls hmm. and also trying to get the next job for your four guys that need work. Hmm. You got to delegate. You have to learn how to delegate. Yeah. You cannot be a successful business owner. You are not a successful business owner mm -hmm. if you're on the ground micromanaging the situation. That's real. You are a, okay. Look, okay. Let me let me step back. You are a successful business owner, mm -hmm. but you're not gonna get to the million dollar stage. Yeah, you're not that. gonna reach your peak. Until you're not you gonna reach your peak. You're and gonna that's, be, and that's what my older like always says to me. You're not gonna reach your peak. You and that's to that's a it. that's a hard pill to swallow. Though. Like you saying it hurt again. Like it, that is real. Is. Like that's real. I try to do it all. Back to, now I'm going to wrap it all around. Yeah. That's why I had to get a property management for my property. Mm -hmm. I thought I could do it all. Yeah. That's why I had to get a dispatcher for my trucking company. Mm. I tried to do it all. Mm. And it didn't work out. And I really learned very quickly. I can't do it all. I'm one man. No one man can do it. Or woman. You need a team. Mm. Unfortunately. <laughs> it sucks. And you don't realize it now, but you will eventually. Yeah. 
So you and have a trucking business still? No. Oh, okay. Prince, the last time that worker called me, <laughs> the last time I wanted to hear about that trucking company. <laughs> I'm still paying some shit about the trucking company. I'm still paying like the insurance, like the, because you know you still have to pay out the the premium on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's tax, and I'm not about to pay the whole thing. <laughs> Look, life is very sickening. Like you know, you you go through decisions, but it makes who you are. It makes yeah. you who you are. So, the business on OTV, that's what it's called. OBT. OBT. Orange Blossom Trail. <laughs> okay, what's it called? Puffzilla. Puffzilla Smoke Shop. Puff come Zilla. by, come shop. You yeah. know, hey. And then come the show con- me love. and then construction. The construction business. Um, uh, in the real estate, love that. Um, that really gives me passive income. Yeah. Uh, the next project I have in store, um, I'm gonna do a cash out refinance, and mm-hmm. I want to buy a 50 to 60 unit in Tennessee, somewhere. Wow. Texas, somewhere where there's not many big ballers. Florida is a very saturated market. Yeah. Uh, so many retirees with a lot of money. Yeah, they got bread out here. Um, Especially in the city where I'm at. Correct. Yeah. Um, it's too much money, so you have to go where you fit in. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing I could tell people about business is you have to be moldable. You mm-hmm. have to be flexible. Yeah. Um, I learned the most when I took my most when I took my L's. Mm-hmm. Um, there's people who've stolen from me money. Mm-hmm. Like I was gonna say, the government contracting dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I paid him six k. I'm still waiting on my back ends for my six k <laughs> and. And plus, really? um, when it comes to construction, I learned very quickly, uh, older people will try to take advantage of you. You know, I'm a young guy getting into the construction industry. Yeah. There's a lot of sleazy guys. Yeah. I'm still waiting on, you know, 5,000 here, 10,000 there from people who take advantage of me because I, I have the workforce. Yeah. Let's say you have a contract mm-hmm. and I can do it way cheaper than somebody that you know can do it. Yeah. Of course I can because yeah. I got the source. Yeah. See, most of everything, the you as a as a customer, mm-hmm. you're paying X five times more of what you re- what I'm really getting it for. That's a fact. I think when it really set in for me when I went on my journey in yeah. college of figuring out, um, once again, because I did um, uh, drop shipping. Once I learned drop shipping, I was like, bro, I'm spending this much when I could really just be spending this much from Alibaba, AliExpress. I was like, bro. Never pay the full price on something. If you can find the full price somewhere here, you can find a cheaper price somewhere else. I promise you on everything that you own. I'm also a very inexpensive person, so everybody listening is probably like, oh, Rich, you don't even like to spend money. But, hey, if you can find it, you can find it somewhere else. I promise you. And from what he's saying, basically, you're getting fucked regardless. (laughs) Somebody's making money off of you. That's a fact. You cannot escape it. You cannot escape it. Yeah. Think about the simple process. Mm Mm-hmm. I bought a Tesla. This man's talking about there's an infrastructure bill trying to get charging stations everywhere. Yeah. That's just making Elon richer. Yeah. You're getting fucked regardless. You got a nice Tesla, though. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I, just bought it I didn't notice that was your car until you guys like kind of walked away from yeah. it. I was like, oh, that's a nice, that's a nice Tessie. I don't really like Tessies. Yeah, no. It's... I'm not a big Tessie guy. Yeah. I got me a Genesis. I love okay. that Genesis. Okay. But the Tessie had me like, ooh, that was kind of nice. I know, a little, a little. You, you, red, uh, you also rent cars. Right? Yeah, I do. Top Sweet Rentals. Oh, my God. You... You see, I did see, my I research. Have so many, look, guys, I, I have did so my many, research. I did my research. You have so many, uh, 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 so many things that S- streams. So many, you know, so many delegations. Yeah. Uh, that I almost forgot about that. Yeah, I rent rentals. Uh, I rent exotic cars, also economy cars. Mm. Um, I've probably rented to your artists. See, I'm the lame guy. You're, you're, you're the guy you're a fan of comes to to use my car. He comes and asks me, "Hey, can I use your car for this music video for an hour?" Yeah, I'm that guy. Um. <laughs> Had to pop my shit for a minute. No, that's what a flex. Like, no, hold on. Do not hold down that flex. Flex Had to pop my shit for yeah. a minute. You know what I mean? Hey, behind all these people that you think are getting it, bro, there's a guy who you might not think is the person who actually owns the things. A lot of the things we see on social media is a fallacy. It doesn't exist. It's yeah. not theirs. Yeah. It's all borrowed. It's all fake. It's not real. Yeah. It's the nerdy guy. It's the nice guy. It's the nice guy's whip. That's what you start realizing. It's the nice guy's home. Mm. You know, all these uh, guys who you th- see, this is where this is where uh, my personality comes and takes over because uh, um, those cool guys that you thought in high school were going to be raw, the guys who you thought were the best, six foot, oh, this guy's mm. raw, you know, this hood guy, this yeah. bad motherfucker <laughs> at the end, bro. It's not that. It's that person who, was, who wasn't who was afraid to take leaps and to be <clears throat> himself. 
you know, the people who you, the people who you looked over mm -hmm. are the people who are really running the world. Tough. The people who you don't even think exist Tough. are the people your people are getting things from. Tough. All right. We might need a part two one day to do this. I really like your energy. I, I really like Not your energy. Sure. I do have some personality questions for you. For sure, for sure. Let's get it. Question number one. Would you rather a week of sunny days or warm nights? Warm nights. Hmm. Sunny days just get spicy. Ooh, getting in that car, in the hot ass car. <laughs> when that seatbelt hit you. <laughs> That's hey, crazy. That's the start. first thing you thought of. I'm thinking about that seatbelt. I've been burnt by a seatbelt way too many times, bro. Yeah, okay, okay. Question number two. What is your absolute favorite cheat meal? <laughs> Crawfish. Really? Crawfish and, and shrimp. Really? Yeah. Okay. You're a seafood guy. Yeah. And chipotle. Oh, I'll be going crazy on chipotle. <laughs> okay, Man. okay. Extra cheese with it, too. Number three. What's a question in your life you're still trying to find the answer to? What's a question in my life you're still I'm trying still to trying to find the answer to? Yeah. Will it all be worth it? All these decisions I made, leaving the army, going into debt, running up this, you know, doing all this empire. Mm -hmm. Was it all worth it? The stress, hmm. the loneliness, hmm. is it all worth it? Something you got to ask yourself and something I'm still asking myself to this day. Mm. Will it all be worth it at the end? Number four. Did you have fun on Loft? I did. It was an amazing show. <laughs> You're an amazing host. Thank you. Uh, you have a new friend here, you know. I'm, we locked in now. I'm, I'm, I'm putting my hand out there. Uh, yeah. uh, and I hope you have me back, you know. I, I thank you for bringing me on. And yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. No, definitely. We're gonna something's gonna come out of this. You're too cool of a dude, man. On, man. And your brothers and your bro, you guys are legit. Like <laughs> I've known y'all. I don't know why I felt like I've known y'all, but like we locked in now. Nah. For sure, for sure. I'll um, I'll give you guys my transformation video too, so you guys can see that as bro, well. I'm put put, that no, up. when we talked about it, yeah. it played. I'm not gonna lie to you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it played. Come on. But um, yeah. any wise words you want to leave the people with? Those people at the top are just like me and you. The difference is the decisions they've made in life. Mm. The small decisions in life has affected the way you live now. Mm. The way you are, the way you don't care about things, the way you say you're going to wait for it tomorrow, mm. the way you don't make your bed in the morning, mm. The way you might miss brushing your teeth one day. Hmm. Small shit like that. And it's not me. No, yeah. You're God, talking. it's the balance of life. Yeah. Life balances you out. You think you get to get away with it, but you can't get away from the almighty and the all seeing and karma. Mm. It all comes back. Mm. Your decisions, you make every day count and they pile on top of each other. That's the biggest advice I could give somebody. Act fast, act now, and don't wait. Vote for Ortega. <laughs> hey, you know, it's funny. That's actually in the path. Hey. That's actually in the path. Hey, bro. you have a running mate right here, buddy. That's in the path, bro. <laughs> I just graduated from uh, AMU. Yeah. With a bachelor's in international relations and global security. Love that. Um, for that exact same reason. Yeah. You know, there's sheeps. Mm -hmm. There's the people. Hmm. And then there's the people running the people. Yeah. And, they're, and then the people running the people, there's people behind them making decisions. Yeah. I want to at least be in the room where those decisions are being made so we can, so I at least have a say in what happens to me. Yeah. All our decisions are decided by other people who don't even come from our background. Yeah. Who don't even understand how EBT affects a family. Mm. It's all statistic, statistics for them. Yeah. It's all a spreadsheet. Yeah. But they don't know how it feels to lose water. They can't, to, put, a, they can't put a name to the, to you the know number. You I mean? When your lights go off, Haiti, I know you, your parents probably told you how the lights, they don't have lights. <laughs> they got to take showers, cold showers in a bucket. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> I've done God. it myself. Yeah. <sighs> I want to be at least in those rooms. Mm. And, you know, that's one of my ambitions, and that's, that's where I want to, in the future, I want to, Wiggle around in that area and that's like that. Well, 
Where can they find you? You can find me on Takers World 4. Mm -hmm. um, you can also follow my business, uh, Top C Rentals. If you need any rentals, exotic, eco, any car, even a jet ski, mm -hmm. hit up Top C Rentals. You can also find me on Pub Little Smoke. If you need any vapes, the best prices in Orlando, hit my line. And if you really want to, you know, tap in and, you know, learn, I will give you the sauce for free. Mm. Just don't waste my time and do something with it. And at the end of the day, you're not finessing me. You're finessing yourself and you're finessing your last name. Not me. <laughs> you make the decisions for your life and I'll make the ones for mine. Love. Peace and tranquility for everybody. <laughs> The Loft TV, tap in or get left behind. Ooh. You decide. Ooh. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. And another, this is probably my, one of my favorite episodes I've done in Orlando so far. Um, the Loft TV, do something positive, make a new friend, call the person you haven't spoke to in a while, um, say a prayer, um, eat something healthy, drink water. Why are you not drinking water? Like you, right there. You're not drinking water. Drink it. Pick it up. Drink some water. And uh, subscribe. Subscribe, tune in, tap in. Let's get this viewer count up, man. Yeah. Let's the get law. This viewer count. We out. <laughs>